Hey, what's up YouTube? Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your front brake pads on a 2018 GMC Yukon XL. Now the first thing I like to do is push the caliper pistons back inside the caliper, which will make room for the new thicker pad material. Now when you're doing this, you're essentially pushing the brake fluid backwards up through the brake line into the master cylinder again. Now before we try to push those caliper pistons back in, let's go take a look under the hood at the level of fluid in the master cylinder just to make sure there's enough room in there that we're not gonna overflow it and make a mess. All right, so here's our brake master cylinder reservoir and you can see that the level below the max that means someone has probably not been topping this off as the brake pads have been wearing down and that's fine that will uh, give us the room that we can uh, push that fluid backwards up into the system a lot of people ask me if you need to take this cap off of the master cylinder before pushing those pistons back in you really don't any trapped air inside here will still be able to escape I usually like to leave the lid on now that I've learned that brake fluid absorbs moisture and that will degrade the brake fluid over time. It's hygroscopic, if I'm saying that word right, but it just means that it absorbs moisture, even the moisture in the air. And so the less exposure to air, the better when you're talking about brake fluid. If this were full or someone had been topping it off, you may need to take the cap off and suck some of that old fluid out, either with a turkey baster or some sort of a syringe. There's lots of different tools, or you can even just roll up a few paper towels and put them in there and that will also wick the old fluid up and out. Okay, so we know we've got room in the brake master cylinder for the additional fluid that's going to be pushed that way. The way that I like to push the caliper pistons back in is just a, I call it the screwdriver method or a small pry bar. And you really just put a screwdriver in through this little opening right here. And sometimes you can catch the edge of the rotor, sometimes you'll catch the actual edge of the brake pad. And then really you're just pulling that towards you and you can see the, you can see that caliper piston move. It's just moving along these slide pins. And what that does, you see that? It makes room for the new pad material. I'm also just gonna shift the screwdrivers down here over between the pad and the rotor and do the same thing again. See, we've got lots of room in there now for the new brake pad material. Okay, now we need to loosen and remove these two bolts right here. They, they're the slide pin bolts and those are 19 millimeter. Now, sometimes when you attempt to loosen these, this part of the slide pin will also want to spin and that's also a 19 millimeter. You may have to put an open end wrench on that. Let's take a look. Okay, well that didn't slide, so that's good. Let's loosen the bottom one here. Perfect. I'm just gonna spin those off really quick here with the Milwaukee ratchet. This is the 3 8 drive extended reach. That's what those look like. Okay, now we can pull the caliper off. Oh, it looks like our, our outside brake pad is kind of stuck on this caliper. There we go. That happens sometimes when these get really hot. And then we're just gonna use one of these little hooks and put it in here. And I'm just gonna hang it on the coil spring over there out of the way. Just make sure that that doesn't damage the wiring for the wheel speed sensor right here. Just make sure that we're good. But you really don't wanna let these dangle by the brake lines. All right, now we can pop out the old pads. And if, those are marks from where I was prying with the screwdriver. And you can see they're worn down, but not quite to this little noisemaker or this little squealer. You can see we're getting kind of close, but uh, we still had some material left. Now, one thing I want to point out is the inside and outside pad are different shapes. You can see this has got this cutout right here to fit in this part of the bracket. And this one is just a straight shot. Also, this is the one that's got the noisemaker or the little metal squealer. And that's on the bottom side of the inside pad on this vehicle. We're also gonna take out these clips here. They call these abutment clips, or some people just call them retainer clips. And you can see right there where the pads wear or where they ride. This one's kind of digging in. They're worn out. It's a good idea to change those. Sometimes your brakes don't come with them. This kit did, thankfully. Now we're also gonna take out and clean and regrease the slide pins. So I just pull those out and you can see these are really dirty. Just wipe off that old grease. And I usually will put it, put it inside once or twice more just to try to get any of that old material out of there. And then we wanna put on some new grease. This is Silglide. I just use the clean part of my glove right here on the back side here just to kinda smash that around and swirl that grease all around that slide pin. 
don't want to use too much because it's not compressible and it'll get bound up in there but these actually felt like they were a little light on grease as well when you put it back in sometimes you need to squeeze it a little boot to burp out any air same with the top one Just pull it out clean it off Just a couple times a little bit more grease again this is a special type of grease like a silicone based grease regular grease will not work it gets hot and it'll it'll lock these up and they'll get stuck and then that'll cause your brakes to bind that looks good just make sure that they slide freely now before we put the new abutment clips or their little retainer clips on it's a good idea to clean this area lately i've just been using this guy right here it's a little wire wheel on a drill i like that it's this softer brass type of wheel it doesn't scratch or gouge anything but it really cleans it up so let's go ahead and do that I think it does a pretty good job of cleaning that up. Now lately I've noticed a lot of people are putting some grease underneath these clips. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Not only does it protect it from some corrosion, I mean it's the same material as all of this, but it prevents corrosion from building up underneath these which can cause the brakes to bind. But by putting just a really small amount of grease underneath there, it also seems to dampen a little bit of the, the vibrations that happen every time you brake which can reduce your noise. Just be real careful not to get any of this grease on the rotor. If you do, make sure you clean it off with brake clean. All right, then we can put these new clips in. I really had to kind of force those. As long as they sit flush on there, you're good. Same with the upper. Really just gotta force that on. There it goes. Now I'm going to do the same thing, just a little bit of grease here and the little channels where the pad rides. You know, this grease will prevent those pads from getting bound up. And the idea is that the brakes will be able to move in and out. As the pads wear down, the brakes need to be able to slide along there. And, and really, we just don't want them to get bound up. If they get bound up, they'll drag and overheat. So this is the inboard pad. You can see this is the one with the straight side. And I'm going to put just a small amount of the grease on the back of this pad. Sometimes I'll also just put a little bit on the face of these caliper pistons. Very little. Again, we don't want to attract a lot of dust here. But that does seem to cut down on some of that vibration that happens, which causes the noise. There we go. And you can see these little springs in here. That part of the clip pushes these outward to prevent them from dragging on the rotor. Just make sure you don't touch the friction material with any of this grease. Just a little thin coat of brake grease on the outside of these shims and here in the inside of the caliper, that's the part that rides on this. Really, it just seems to dampen some of the vibration. Now, you don't wanna use a lot of grease here. We don't wanna create a dust magnet there and a ton of grease will attract dust, but this small thin film of grease really will cut down on some of that noise. All right, now we can unhook the caliper right there. And as you put it over the brake pads, sometimes you need to squeeze those because those little metal springs are pushing outward. Well, we should be able to fit over that. Now the other thing you may have to do is pull back a little bit on these slide pins. Make sure that we can fit this over those shims and pull back on those slide pins. And then we can put these caliper slide pin bolts back in. Just get them started. You may have to Pull the caliper back out or lift it a little bit to get that to line up. There we go. And just going to zip these on real quick. Now we need to torque these to 74 foot-pounds. Now I did another brake job on a similar vehicle on a 2015 Yukon. At the time, what I found there was 80 foot-pounds and that's what I did. I didn't have any issues and of course, you know, a, a few extra foot-pounds is usually not that big of a deal but what i was able to find this time when i was just looking it up online was 74 so that's what i'm going to do this is the torque wrench that i'm using the gear wrench 85062 and here i'm also grabbing this 19 millimeter open end wrench when i did the other side the slide pins after getting the new grease they do like to spin so i'm going to use that to hold that slide pin in place while we torque this And 
and you're done. Now, before you drive off, make sure you step on the brake pedal a few times. Don't press the pedal all the way to the floor. That can damage the seals in your master cylinder. But just press it down about halfway a few times until the pedal feels firm. And what that's doing is pushing these caliper pistons back out, pressing the brake pads firmly up against the rotor where they need to be. Go ahead and get everything torqued to spec. Double check your manual on that one. And double check the fluid level in your master cylinder reservoir as well. Hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.